is on importance of anatomy in clinical practice. So, one minute, I'll get familiar with this. So, the objectives for this session is at the end, the viewers should be able to understand the importance of anatomy in the practice of profession and what are the interesting ways of learning anatomy. At least some you should be able to grab. Then the how to get integrated because you will be getting a questions, integrated questions and how to answer the MCQs when they are given. So a glimpse of all these we are going to go through during this session. So there is evolution in the education. The figure itself speaks from the gurukulas to computer. It has started and from blackboard to bandwidth, it has extended and now it is the era of digital teachers and electronic learners. Because of our positive thinking, so even in pandemic, we are able to cope up with the teaching and learning. Because of the enhanced technology through the ebooks, YouTube videos, shared PPTs, interactions with the peers, the group discussions, paper based clinical case scenarios. Then there, there are three domains of knowledge. So I call it as the ask. So what is that ask? Let us see. So now you will get what is ask attitude, which is important. Then the skills, knowledge. These are the three and which you will be able to do with your head, hand and hearts that we call it as the cognitive, psychomotor and effective domains in the education. Then for an individual, it's very important to have communication. So there are different methods of communication to share the ASK, A-S-K. So medical education, it has got uh, these three domains. In addition to that, there is CVE, I call it. It is the communication and adopting values and ethics, which is more important for this, all the professions, but more so for the medical profession. So for practicing the profession, anatomist should, anatomy is a must. So starting from conceptus donation to cadaveric donation, I call it. So conceptus donation is the donation of the ovum or sperm and its fertilization you have seen. And then the pre to periconceptional and extending to geriatric care, it is important. And the cadaveric donation and cadaveric organ donation is the important field that is developing and which is required very much. And that also requires a basic knowledge of anatomy. And starting from therapies, physical therapy to stem cell therapy, you require the knowledge of anatomy. And in this uh, PPT, you can see the embryo within the amniotic sac and the placenta. All these are important structures to begin with in our life. Then you are seeing a picture of the umbilicus. Yes. So after the delivery, and what else you are observing here is the undescended testis. Yes. And then the, what we may consider, what is the importance of this umbilicus? It has got a lot of embryological attachments are there. The uh, systems that are related are the blood vascular system, gastrointestinal tract, and the urinary system. So the importance of the umbilicus. Then the undescended testis. Yes. So it is in a newborn. You can see it undescended, but you have to wait for some time to make it descend. They will wait for maybe up to one year. And if it is not descending, then what are the pathological effects, clinical conditions, and where the surgery, what Kishan Rao said, it plays an important role. So the aim of medical education is not just acquisition of theory or practical knowledge, 
to be reproduced in the examination for just getting an MBBS degree or whatever degree further. But it should be the ability to apply this theoretical knowledge coupled with practical and communication skills. So with the added values, that is the ethical and value added system is required for benefiting the patients in real life situation. So when is our real examination for the doctor? This is a, the question which I will be putting to all the students. It's not uh, when uh, you have faced the examination. Real examination is once you get your degree and face the patient. The patient is going to be your examiner and you will be the examiner. Imagine that situation. So what he will be asking, what is my problem? What is the cause? Why and how this has occurred? What investigations we are going to recommend? And what is the logic behind it? These are all the things that, and what treatment we are going to give? And will I be cured completely? What are the side effects? How does it give relief? All these questions are put to you. And as an examinee, you have to answer for all these which you have mentioned. What is the diagnosis or the reasoning out, the explanation, the scientific basis, the success rate, risk involved, and how you are going to make the treatment effective. These are all the questions. So the real examination will start after getting the degree you are seeing so many embryological images. And what are these images? What do they speak? So see this image. This is the abnormal fetus. Where lies the defect? There is a facial defect is there and then the hydrocephalus is there. Then the protrusion of the contents from the abdominal cavity is there and one more you are seeing. So multiple anomalies. We should be able to give explanation for these anomalies. These are the questions. Okay? After the delivery of a abnormal fetus, the parents, anxious parents, they are going to ask. Then you are seeing another abnormal fetus here. Yes. So this is a case of acephalic and acardiac fetus. I have seen two such cases. And both of them, they are seen in cases of IVF, those who has consumed with IVF. That is my observation. Then you are seeing another one with a single monoductyl. Only one finger is there. So you should be able to provide the embryological basis for this anomalies. Then see another case. So where you will be seeing a mother 24 hours after delivery of the baby complains that uh, there is prudent discharge draining from the nose, both the nostrils and uh, becoming blue when she is breastfeeding. So the pediatrician will call for examination and he will pass the nasal catheter and he, uh, he tries to pass, it will not go. Then he will ask for a CT and diagnosis of bilateral coronal atresia. Now the questions should start coming. So what is coronal atresia? What is the basis for the development of this coronal atresia? you should be able to answer. So now we have to start questioning yourself. So what, when, where, why, how, all these questions should come to your mind because questioning is an integral part of teaching and learning process. So better to question yourself, then you will get stimulated to get the answers for it. So first you should know the normal to understand the abnormal. It means normal developmental anatomy. And in this case of coronal atresia, what are bilaminar membranes? And where do you find? And what is their normal fate? What will happen if their fate is abnormal? So the abnormal development or the non-disappearance of this buccopharyngeal membrane so is the cause for this coronal atresia. How you can come to that conclusion unless you have the basics. You cannot give the explanation for the condition. Then see, in your first class in anatomy is anatomical position, planes, and terminology. But most of the introductory classes you will miss. 50% I have seen, you will miss these classes. They are the basic foundations for understanding the 
subject. And then you, the picture itself speaking for the apex beat and why it is located and how you can describe it requires anatomical position. For sectioning of the tissues, you require the anatomical planes. And you can see the movements of a limb or any part of the body. You require the positioning, anatomical position, anatomical planes of movement. So without that, you, can, you cannot give the explanation. Then coming to the terminology, so you should be familiar with the anatomical terminology. So see the difference between perineum and peritoneum. So only one letter change and you a different meaning. So when you are uh, instructing somebody, you should use the, or especially when you are giving it in writing. So clean the perineum. Instead of that, if you use peritoneum, it will become something else. Then the word prostate and prostrate they are also different. So prostrate is different from the prostate organ. Prostration is what? We will do kneeling down. So I have told one of my students also, when he has written for the slide of prostate, prostate, I told, uh, sarcastically told him, why you want to do it so early? Then he has realized the difference in the meaning. Then this stimulates you. What are the similarities? So if you see foramen cecum, you are seeing it at two places. You should be able to differentiate. The word lingula, it comes at two places. Then there is a lamina terminalis, you know. Then there is a, something similar to that, sulcus terminalis, something similar to that, sulcus limitans. So like this, when you are reading, you should try to gather more such words so that it will facilitate you to understand better. Oh, the importance of checklist here, drawing the blood. You may use all your domains and then that is how to get the needle, syringe, all these things will be there and how to proceed and where to tie the cuff and then how to draw all those you will see. But what are the domains that will be missing there? If you check, so the communication domain I have not seen, because you have to communicate to the patient. When, though it is a simple procedure, it is new for him. It's for, maybe for the first time, second time, or third time for him. It may be routine for you. But the communication is more important. Keeping the patient's comfort is important. And always have a checklist of how to proceed with the a procedure. The checklist will help you what to do. And when you are traveling, you will have a checklist of what are all the items you are going to keep in your bag, tickets, money, all those things you will plan. Even for a movie also you will plan. But why don't you plan for the routine work which you are supposed to do? So for that also, the checklist is important. And why you prefer a way, a particular way? So it will come as an MCQ. Make a note of those points. So how the checklist will help you? They, right from day one, have the checklist. Whatever simple thing you are doing, have it. So there is a book on checklist manifesto by Natal Gawande. He's a surgeon. He has written for surgical procedures and all. And so that's a good book to read, which will motivate you the importance of checklist. Then you are seeing the pictures. If you observe, what are the things in there? One, two, three. Go through it. So one and two says there is alteration in the behavior based on the experience. Then what is happening in the third one? The recalling the experience, consciously or unconsciously. This experience all of us had experienced when we are children. Hope all of you agree. And that is the definition for learning and memory. Learning is altered behavior on the basis of experience. And memory is recalling the experience consciously or 
unconsciously. Oh, this picture made you understand the definition. And do we get learning experience without effort? Darwin itself he has told, struggle for existence and survival of the fittest. So that struggle will continue from home to home. And for the doctors, yes, struggle is very important for their self-survival and for the patient survival, for the society wellness. The pandemic has taught us all these things. So there is changed curriculum and we are all equipped with Ask CVE. Now you can recollect what is this Ask CVE, this pneumonic I have given. And then the New Year pandemic has taught us the three L's and three C's, part of living, loving, and learning to become future, caring, comforting, and consoling frontline warriors. Look at a case scenario. So with your eyes closed or blindfolded, if an object is placed in your hand, can you identify its shape, texture, and tell what it is? And can you give it to me? This you are able to do. So what is that? How there is integration between your hand and mouth that you have to think and you should be able to give explanation. So for that, what you need is, uh, what are the pathways? You will talk about the pathway, posterior column pathway, medial lemniscus pathway, vesicles, gracilis, cuneatus, and where are the first order neurons and how they go through the brainstem and where they cross to the opposite side and how they change their name into from internal or create fibers becoming the medial lemniscus pathway and where they get relayed. And these details you will be able to tell. But see this picture. So which picture is uh, more meaningful? This picture is uh, easy for you. And the one which you are seeing here with elaborate, so with so much of information is there. So is it useful? Why it is more informative? Because you can see the various sensations and how they are conveyed through this medial lemniscus pathway and what will happen to the fibers that are received from each level and how they will be arranged in the middle of pons, the midbrain, thalamus, and going to this. So more details are there in this picture when compared to the smaller version. So that is the sensory pathway for the object with which we have started the questioning so that we'll travel. And how you are able to give or speak. So there is a motor pathway and you should have a flow chart where from they are starting and then how they are going through the brainstem and where they will be deposited and then what is their name changes and where they get relayed and to, regarding which part of the body and how the corticospinal, corticonuclear fibers are there. That's why you are able to speak. So how they are connected to the tongue this requires a lot of patience and focus and simplification is required. So now that if you know these pathways, so if a neurology case is there, so hemiplegia, one side, loss of sensation and vibration, so sensory loss also on one side, same side, then the deviation of tongue to the opposite side without facial abnormality if it comes as an MCQ. So you should have the knowledge of the brainstem, the cut sections at various levels, and then the blood supply of that part. Then the sensations that are conveyed with these various tracks, you should know. Then there is the correlate, the presenting features with the anatomical structure in the form of a table, then you will get the answer that it is a case of uh, medial medullary syndrome. So don't leave it there itself. Something similar also you proceed. When there is medial medullary syndrome, there is the lateral medullary syndrome. How to differentiate the two? So read, read them simultaneously. Then there are some other syndromes also nearer. 
Weber's syndrome and Benedict's syndrome. Read them also. That will make you understand all the four types of syndromes. This is one way of learning. And majority is misconceptions about the anatomy. It's vast, tough, dry. So take it in small bits and bites. That will be useful. And use many ways possible. Listening, reading, discussion, doing, playing. All these are the different ways to make it simplify. Then read two or three times. Then you will become familiar with it and develop passion from it. Then there is the teacher and subject-centered learning to learner and problem-centered. The shift is there. Because of that, a teacher is a, a facilitator. Teacher is also facilitator. And student also facilitates the teacher. So it's a mutual, beneficial team, I feel, because I got benefited from my students. And adult learning, they will say, 10%, 20%, 30%, 50%, 70%, 70%, all the things, methods, how we can improve. And if you want to be 80% success, your simulation. So you are seeing flexion and extension of the vertebral column and how they are more possible and in what planes of the body it is possible. So what axis of the joints, these things you have to be familiar. And by writing also the other method, you can keep it, simplifying it. Okay, that is the one you are seeing. Then what is the other thing? Dissection. You can see the layers of testes. Okay, that by demonstrating them and explaining them. And you are seeing the dissection of the fetus also. Cut specimen from fetus also, you can learn. So these are all the methods how the adults will learn. And if there is shortage of human material, go for supplemental material. The radiological anatomy, the living anatomy, in a living person also, usually in the children, if you have small children at home, so you can play with them and learn your anatomy also with them. And the plastination models, so many are available for learning. And I'm here because of you. What message you are getting from this picture? See how the individuals are joined. All the people in this session are adult learners. What has connected is the aptitude to learn. Let us not forget your learners and mutual educators. Success of a learning mission depends on learners' joy of learning. So what you are seeing is uh, how we identified the letter A because of the connection of the neurons. They got connected with one another to give each stroke the letter A and they are joined and that made us identify it as letter A. Then you know about the Christopher Columbus. So here's he went on sailing. And he did not know where he was going. And he reached some place. He doesn't know where he is. And he has come back. And he doesn't know where from he has come back. Then, uh, imagine application of Columbus, principle to our medical profession. What Kishan Rao, Dr. Kishan Rao has mentioned is maybe true. When in preclinicals, I don't know what is that I should learn. And it's used in patient care. When in clinical postings, what is the relevance of my basic sciences in clinical settings? When completed my course, I don't know how to apply my learning in medical school to alleviate the suffering of the patient. If that is the thing, life will become disastrous. Picture speaks and stimulates reading. So you are seeing a abnormal and normal fetuses. You are seeing this is normal and this is the abnormal. And then there is a defect. So hydrocephalus and this is the normal fetal skull with fontanelles. So you should have knowledge of fontanelles and you should have the flow of CSF. And then what are the places where it can get obstructed? 
to understand the different types of work, the hydrocephalus. So have a flow chart and study about the circulation of CSF. And you are seeing another image here. So what is this case? This is a case of cystic hygroma. The defect is in relation with the drainage of the lymphatic system and how the lymph flows. You should have the basic knowledge and then where it can get obstructed. So what are all the major ducts, lymphatic ducts? There is obstruction there. And because of that, it has resulted into this condition. And you can go through a articles that are published in relation with such abnormalities that will also stimulate you to learn and gain more and more information. So my feeling is a live fetus is the parent of future human and aborted fetus is the guru for the present health care provided. So this is what I feel. So I benefited a lot from the works on the fetus. And the other thing is what is missing in us is the elaboration of thinking. It was there when we were children. If you see these images, you can understand. And it is an inborn instinct is there, elaboration of thinking. But it is lost when we are going up, growing up. So what is the reason? Let us go back to that and develop that elaboration of thinking. I can give you an example. The neurovascular bundles in the body. So if that is there, what it strikes you is only the costal group, intercostal space, or in the abdomen, neurovascular planes, that only will restrict. Try to go up and down also. There are neurovascular bundles in several parts. Try to pull up them. That is one way of learning. I don't want to go into the details, just to introduce you, to stimulate you to focus such areas. Then there are different types of memories there. You know, by looking at it, you know, those who are uh, very passionate about the cricket and then with the phones, then with the mathematic tables, which we have learned when we were children. Then how to convert the short-term memory to long-term memory. Revise. Extended thinking is important. Similarities and dissimilarities. Then the importance of quick recap. Points to ponder, ready reconnor, all these are important. And attending the re revision classes, you can develop mnemonics, the flowcharts, tables, all these will facilitate the understanding, improves the learning. See, the van, vein, artery, nerve. So, vein and artery are there together at several places. Then, added bronchus instead of nerve or ureter or you will be seeing the other components that will be there in the case of the other areas. So try to prepare okay, structures which will be having these components similar and dissimilar component, one of which will be changing, differing. Then, see the picture. It will speak how to remember the genu, volgum, and genu, vera. This is a, another way of remembering. And then it will stimulate you to read about the, what is genu, volgum, what is genu, vera. Then you will overcome the apprehensions you are having about the subject. Then there are four no's. And we no. Okay. So not num. What are they? Where, are, where you will find in relation with sesamoid bones or in articular cartilage. So if you remember them, consolidate them. So this is how the numerical numerology plays an important role because we are fascinated with numbers. What are the two reasons? Then the three places, four numbers, five numbers like that, is numbers. Remembering one hand, it will give you more strength. Then the words, the men and male. So 
structures passing through foramen spinosum where you use the mnemonic men and passing through foramen vovel where we use the mnemonic may so this will also facilitate you to for remembering the subject and its application that's more important and another thing is how to retain the long term memories so there is a basis for remembering the mo the movie which you have observed and when you have ridden the bicycle or car and when is your birthday on your friend's birthday so all these things are there then why you are able to remember because you have developed a passionate bondage for that and why not same thing for the subject see the hot water bag so will it facilitate learning yes the lesser sac imagine the lesser sac and its recesses the epiploic foramen okay the entry into the lesser sac then you will get stimulated to read about the lesser sac and epiploic foramen then make learning more innovative i came across this picture and i thought why not i use this picture for teaching the development of face and the various developmental comp components of the face so various various parts of face you are seeing in this table the developmental components you are seeing and the sensory nerve supply so this is a method to follow to facilitate knowledge retention contextual learning and their clinical application so by looking at this you can see what are all the pro Uh, developmental processes that are involved the frontonasal maxillary mandibular processes and then the median nasal lateral nasal processes and how they they contribute for the various parts of it so once you know the normal how to apply it clinically yes so then you will get the answers for the what is the basis for oblique facial cleft macrosomia microsomia uni or bilateral cleft lip and then the midline cleft of upper lip and cleft of lower lip this is how you can plan when you are reading the complex or multifaceted learning so the picture is speaking and you know the story the same let us apply so when you are talking about the liver integrate it the various components the anatomy and including the microscopic developmental functional the molecular and genetic functional basis of structure so how to integrate it if you see the section of the liver so first you will be focusing on the histology and you know about the various lobules how to identify a hepatic lobule and then the other types of lobules the basic uh, structure is the hepatic lobule hexagonal lobule and then the what is portal triad all these things will come across and there are other types of lobules are also there and that also you have to learn for understanding the function and its clinical application you will be learning during your course portal lobule and then the portal acinus which has got lot of clinical importance depending on the blood flow and then the which one will uh, face more of nutritional loss those things uh, you will learn from that and you can see the functional path of the bile and how it will be going through path of bile also you can have a flow chart and find out how it will be going through and how, where it will be delivered that is how you have to plan for it and content management also is important starting a simple book simple language and go to higher level higher level and always with pictures you should follow them then you will focus on it otherwise uh, reading blindly lose interest and go to another book and then see it that is second revision for you and then there is the reading uh, regularity is also important though there should not be any holiday you will read something every day that is the one select easy to draw images and then practice drawing and orient with it so all this should go together then 
another topic I wanted to simplify. The intrinsic muscles of hand, total how many? 20 numbers. And how they are distributed and what is their nerve supply? Have some formula for it. Then it's easy to remember them and remember the nerves. Then the major nerves of brachial plexus, what are they and what is their work? So why the musculocutaneous nerve is no work in forearm and hand? Why ulnar nerve has full work in hand, half in forearm and no in arm? Why the median nerve has got full work in forearm, half in hand and no work in arm? The radial nerve will be full work in arm and forearm and no work in hand. So prepare a table after reading all those components, the areas, then you can simplify it in the form of a table, giving some numericals, P. What is the P, F, so pronators, and then the F flexors, E extensors, hypothenor, like that you give their letter, and then how many muscles are there. Then you will understand the muscles of upper limb. Same thing for anything. Then look at the image, image challenge also. So what is Michael's diverticulum? You have to remember the number two for remembering the Michael's diverticulum. This was taught to you in your clinical practice also. So three peculiarities of trochlear nerve. Like that you do decide and then you will be able to do. So what I want to stress is the importance of numerology. And I'm already stressing on the regular study habits. And don't uh, read, recollect, have a page, rough page. So write down points and find out what is missing. Then read it, then again write points. Then you are seeing this water, you are seeing in this picture. So practice it, read. Don't read for a longer time. Take breaks. Scheduled breaks are there. And self-rewards are also important like a glass of water or milk or chocolate or social media, you can go to that. It is recall memory. Then we are seeing these three, these two positions. So how to keep the seat belt? So what muscles are active? And if there is inability to do these things, okay, this exercise shown in figure one and figure two, what is responsible? Question yourself. Then you will go on searching for it. And what nerve is responsible? What muscles are responsible? That will motivate you to read. That is another way. Then the perineal body. What are all the structures contributing? So you will be struggling how to remember it. Develop a mnemonic. And put a simple line diagrams. Okay. Which anyone can draw. Yes. That will help you to remember it. And then above all these things, whatever is said and done, motivation is important. So doctors without anatomy are like moles. You are seeing the mole. They work in the dark. And the work of their hands are moles. So how to get motivated? Self is the best. Then peer in, interaction with friends, teacher interaction with teachers, role models will be there. And clinicians, interaction with clinicians. Then the patients, they will also make you learn. So anatomy deals with dead, but it is not dead. How to make it lively? Rest in your three heads, head, heart, and hands. So did you get motivated from this webinar? webinar? If yes, thank you. If no, need to discuss what is missing. And then the other one which I want to discuss is the how to remember the bronchopulmonary segments. So I have put a mnemonic, a palm, a mouth. So if you put that, you will write the then bronchopulmonary segments. And only the lateral and medial, they become the superior and inferior on the left side. Otherwise, this the same and have a table. This will give you a full picture about the bronchopulmonary segments. Then go through some motivational quotes. So which Dale Carnage, I like the books of him. So develop success from failure. 
discouragement and failure are two of the surest stepping stones to success. I believe in it. So what are the mentors? Who are all the mentors? At your home, in your family, in the neighborhood, in school, in college, in hospital, in this session. So people behind one success will be there. So there is another author, Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's also a good book. It's a motivational book. Having a mentor is like having an insurance policy. Benefits will be maximal when you pay regular premiums. What are the premiums you are paying? Is the interaction. So I am also getting benefited by interaction with this group this day. What is the philosophy of life? What you get out of life depends on what you put into it. It's the same with menu, music, machine, medicine, mind, magic, examination, and how you played it. So I have modified the quote of Tom Leher. He restricted it to music. I extended it so, to the philosophy of life. How well you prepare for any event and how well you organize for success will decide the outcome. Hope this session is useful to you. And I thank Dr. Kishan Rao of White Army and the theme publishers for giving me this opportunity to interact with the students. Thank you. You have gone through your uh, test script series first, uh, first volume, madam. Excellent yeah. book. I wish I had a, a one such book uh, during my <laughs> MBBS days as well. Uh, I envy my juniors, those who are very privileged and uh, uh, by such books. Madam, can you please tell more? Uh, I, I, I have seen myself, but can from your side, can you please tell uh, the salient features or uniqueness of the that particular books, uh, madam? Very good. It's very good. That is, uh, they, they can face them. Once you are uh, nearing, approaching the examination. Hello, are you able to hear? Yes, madam. Uh, once they are uh, approaching the examination, this book will reduce their stress. That's what I felt because of the experience I had. Because most of those questions uh, which I have given answers and all uh, in that book, uh, I have tested with my students uh, who are uh, during that pandemic uh, time. And they have benefited. So that's, uh, that is the one that stimulated me to go through it. Otherwise, I am against for writing a, something concising. I would not concise very much, but I have given some details with clinical application also. I have focused so that it will benefit uh, those who want to prepare for the PG entrance. Or uh, for uh, any physician, if they want to refer also, they can refer because it's a small and handy book. Uh, they made it. Uh, it will be of help. And there is online content also, some of the MCQs. And I proposed to them that we will add some more because this is the first time I have also started working uh, on to that more simplification. Uh, then the other one is uh, the tips which I can give is in the form of uh, the numerology. I believed in it and uh, easy for the students uh, to remember and then write if I give explanation during the teaching part. That's the one that stimulated me to focus. The, that's what I can tell about that book. And uh, it all depends upon how the students receive it and the feedback. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, it was actually indeed a very interactive session we have ever seen. And um, not to repeat again, your slides were really, each and every slide speaks for itself, ma'am. Thank so, Thank yeah, and um, the knowledge becomes power only when we understand what we learn and your book uh, comes to a rescue for uh, students like us, mom. And uh, uh, the features like number mnemonics, uh, question and answer format of the textbook, easy to draw diagrams in that book. And also the e-learning platform, which was included in the book, like uh, e-book, MCQs, real-life clinical scenarios, makes this book so amazing and a uh, gift for our students, ma'am. Uh, 
thank you so much for the time and effort you have put in this book uh, we are very grateful to you ma'am thank you so much uh, uh, my deepest gratitudes to you ma'am and uh, yeah i also uh, thank team publishers for associating with us for sponsoring quiz prizes bringing renowned authors to our platform and also giving valuable books for discounted prices to our members thank you so much and um, to our members there's an important and interesting announcement to make that is our team publishers uh, announced 30% discount for our white army members so if you are going to buy uh, any books from team publishers you can use the coupon code wa30 that's white army 30 and you can get a uh, amazing 30% discount so have a great day my dear friends thank you so much thank you everyone thank you sweta krishnaro thank you madam we'll be in touch I'm with you madam uh, sure, we'll be huh? in touch with you uh, for more sessions from by you sir oh, sure sure thank god you. bless thank you, so you all god thank bless you, you. thank you